Hello students, welcome to Marine Engineering Tutorials. I am Atul Kumar Gupta and back with a new tutorial. Presently, we are studying Marine Auxiliary Systems and Deck Machinery. Today we have sixth lecture and the topic is Centrifugal Pumps Part 1. In this tutorial, we will first discuss about the specific features of centrifugal pumps. Then we will discuss about the working principle of centrifugal pump. Next we will discuss about the construction and operation of single stage, single entry centrifugal pump. Then we will discuss about single and double entry pumps. Next we will compare the NPSS requirement for single and double entry pumps. Lastly, we will discuss about the construction and operation of two stage centrifugal pumps. Let's discuss these to the following slides. Specific features of centrifugal pumps. Category of the pump. Centrifugal pumps fall under the category of rotodynamic pumps. Specific uses. Centrifugal pumps are used to handle low viscosity liquids. Liquids handled on ships through these pumps may include water, petroleum products and chemicals. Characteristics of centrifugal pumps. Centrifugal pumps provide constant flow rate and discharge pressure with respect to time. Drawbacks of centrifugal pumps. Centrifugal pumps are unable to handle vapors. They may be equipped with a priming arrangement to remove air or vapors from the suction site when expected to draw liquids from a level below the pump, especially when the liquid is volatile in nature with high vapor pressure. This problem can be eliminated if the pump is submerged in the liquid. Working principle of centrifugal pump. This sketch explains the working principle of a centrifugal pump. Pump casing should be filled up by the liquid before the pumping action can take place. Pump consists of an impeller attached to the shaft, driven by a prime mover, which can be an electric motor, a hydraulic motor, a diesel engine, or a steam turbine. Impeller has a number of wheels which displace the liquid trap between them thereby imparting kinetic energy to the liquid. Impeller rotates in a wallet casing which converts the kinetic energy of the liquid into the pressure energy. Liquid enters the impeller eye from the inlet connection actually and is delivered to the volume casing radially. As the liquid is thrown out, vacuum is created at eye of the impeller and more liquid is induced 
to fill up the space created by discharged liquid. Once the liquid reaches the eye, pumping starts and it continues as long as the required net positive suction head is available. The liquid is finally discharged from the pump delivery connection. Centrifugal pump provides a constant head or pressure for a certain system because the impeller diameter is fixed and motor usually operates at constant speed. As maximum pressure developed by a centrifugal pump is limited, it does not have a relief valve as required by displacement pumps and it is usually started with delivery valve closed for limiting the starting torque or motor current. Single stage, single entry, vertical centrifugal pump. The sketch shows the construction and operation of a single stage, single entry, vertical centrifugal pump, which is common arrangement of ships as it saves the space. Pump consists of a casing mounted on its foundation and is equipped with suction and delivery connections. Top cover consists of line bearing for supporting the shaft where the liquid being handled provides cooling and lubrication. Pump shaft passes through the top cover and is attached to the impeller with the help of a key and a nut. Wheel rings are fixed in pump casing and top cover to seal between stationary and rotary parts and restrict the leakage between high and low pressure sites. Gland restricts the leakage of liquid around the pump shaft, which is sealed by the packing rings. For cooling and lubrication of gland, liquid from high pressure side is supplied through a small connection. Most of this liquid returns back to the suction side although a part of it is allowed to leak out. A motor pedestal is attached to the pump casing which houses the electric motor on its top. This arrangement simplifies the alignment between pump and motor shafts. An intermediate shaft is used to connect the pump and motor shaft through flexible coupling. This arrangement allows removal of pump rotor without removal of electric motor. Single and double entry pumps. This sketch shows minute details for the attachment of an impeller to its shaft and also compares a double entry pump with single entry which is used where large volume of liquid is required to be handled as in case of cargo oil pumps on conventional oil tankers. The shaft has a step to position the impeller.
The impeller is held onto the shaft with the help of a key and secured in position with a nut. The impeller rotates in a casing and the wheel rings fixed to the casing maintain a small clearance with the impeller to minimize the leakage of high pressure liquid to low pressure site. Impeller of single entry pump is provided with a number of utilizing holes which divert the leaked high pressure liquid behind the impeller to the suction site for balancing the thrust. Equalizing holes are not required in double entry impeller as inlet pressure acts on both sides. The incoming liquid enters the double impeller from both sides and passes centrally into the wallet casing for discharge. It is like arranging two pumps mounted side by side on the same shaft and working in parallel. Use of a double entry impeller increases the discharge capacity and balances the axial thrust. Comparison of NPSH requirement for single and double entry pumps. The sketch shows the relationship between net positive suction head requirement and flow for single and double entry pumps. As seen from the diagram, a double entry pump requires lower net positive suction head in comparison to single entry pump which is a unique advantage in poor suction condition. From the curves it can be established that when low net positive suction head is available two or more pumps should be operated in parallel at lower capacity than operating a single pump at higher capacity either by reducing the RPM or by throttling the discharge. This is particularly important during cargo discharging operation on conventional oil tankers when the cargo tank level is low and pump tends to lose suction. Therefore, the cargo oil pumps on conventional oil tankers have double entry arrangement. Two stage centrifugal pump. The sketch shows a two stage centrifugal pump which is usually equipped on board as bilge, ballast, fire, and general service pump. It also carries an attached vacuum pump for priming when used for build or ballast service. The pump consists of two impellers which work in series such that discharge of first impeller goes to the suction of the second with a purpose to increase the discharge pressure progressively. Each impeller forms the stage and these are separated by a stage ring between the discharge of two impellers. To facilitate assembly and disassembly of pump, the casing is vertically split in two halves. Wheel rings are fixed in the pump casing on the suction sides. Usually, the rotor is independently supported by two bearings, although in some pumps, 
load of upper bearing is taken by electric motor as shown in this sketch. Gland is equipped on the first stage suction to restrict the leakage of liquid around the shaft. When the shaft is supported by two bearings, gland is provided on either side. Liquid for gland cooling is supplied from first stage discharge. Cooling and lubrication through bottom bearing is maintained by circulation of liquid from first stage delivery to first stage suction. Usually, the thrust produced by the pump is balanced by providing the suction of both impellers on opposite sides, and such rotors are supported by motor and bottom bearing as shown in this sketch. When thrust is imbalanced, the rotor is supported by two numbers ball bearings which are able to absorb thrust and prevent its transmission to the motor bearing. As these bearings are grease lubricated, they do not require any circulation of cooling liquid as in this case. Occasionally, these pumps are equipped with a changeover cork to use the two impellers in parallel when high capacity is desired. Normal position of impeller is in series for high head. Multi-stage Single entry centrifugal pumps are used for high pressure application such as boiler feed pumps, fire pump for reductor drive and deep well cargo pumping etc. Motor is fitted on the pedestal and connected to the pump with a flexible coupling. A friction clutch is provided for the operation of vacuum pump to prime the main pump. This completes the study in this lecture. This book is written by me and covers all the topics as per the syllabus specified by Indian Maritime University. It clarifies the concepts with simple illustrations. The book also provides answers to all the questions which have appeared in the examination conducted by Indian Maritime University. The book can help the students in preparing for the exams and also to work on ships, auxiliary systems and deck machinery safely. Hope you have liked the lecture. You can write your feedback in the comment box. If you have liked the tutorial, you may share it with your friends. You may subscribe to the channel for getting notification about the new tutorials. I will be back with the new lecture shortly. Thanks for watching till the end.